Hey Riley, how's it going? So, I, um, we're in the process of uh, starting and working our way through Applied Energistics. Um, there's a fair amount of video involved in this, so I'm going to have to break it up into a bunch of different episodes uh, in places where I hadn't originally intended to. Uh, so I'm just going to put this little clip at the start of all of our Applied Energistics stuff, just so you know. Yeah, welcome to another AE clip. Yes, I know it's broken up in a bit of a messy way. I'm really sorry about that, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's the content that's important. Alrighty, let's get on with it. Hey Riley, how you doing? We're back again for another episode. Um, this episode is just going to be dedicated to moving this to a better location and automating the production of our um, things like our pure crystals and our flux crystals and other things like that. Um, I've done a couple of things off camera. I've added two more of these crafting storage things up here. Uh, what else have I done? Um, I added an export bus on top of the extractor and an import bus behind it and this is set to export sticky resin so that any sticky resin that goes into the system will automatically be, um, be processed into rubber. Um, I've added an interface and import bus on the, the macerator here and I've told it to, to make Certus quartz dust with Certus quartz so that I can automatically make my quartz glass. Uh, what else have I done? What else have I done? I think that's about it. I mean, I've added a couple more patterns. Oh yeah, that's right. I added um, an interface and an import bus onto the charger, the thing that makes our charged Certus quartz. So once again, you know, that's all it does. It's fairly simple. Um, anything else I've done? A couple more patterns and bits and pieces like that. You know, so that I could make um, a couple of things from Steve's factory manager, you know, fairly easily. Now this little chest, this has got the box of stuff that I'm going to use that's going to help me with automating my little, my little mess over here. Uh, I'll probably need to dig out a little bit more, but for the moment, I'm going to see... Oh, let's just take out the bottom, Laura. Good. Wonderful. Um, what else we got happening? Oh, I've just imported a bunch of gold that I had upstairs and some redstone. Uh, stuff that I'd processed and cooked in my draconic chest, but hadn't actually brought into the system yet. So this is our little area. Uh, you know, it's sort of four by four. Our um, our processing thing is going to end up being three by three. I've just added an extra block so that I've got enough room to to move around and do whatever I need to do. So first thing, first things first. Let's um. Let's clean this up, take it all away. Get rid of that, get rid of that. A bit of stone to fill in the holes. Make it all nice and pretty. Okay. So I'm going to have my... You know, basically it's all centred around the block of water, alright? Um, and I'm going to have my block of water, sort of, I've got a five block high space here. Um, I'm going to have it above this one. Yeah, that's right, above that one. Sort of two blocks up in the air. Now, we're going to be using a couple of... Um, uh, hang on a second, give me a moment, give me a moment. Okay. We're going to be using a couple of parts of Steve's factory manager here, alright? Oh, that's supposed to be a rapid item valve, give me a second. 
Um, rapid item valve is this one. Good. Done. Alright. This one is like the brains of a, a factory manager setup, okay? Cable connects everything up, and then you've got this rapid item valve and a block gate. The rapid item valve will pick up items, and the block gate will drop items or place them in the world, right? So to pick up items, we want this to be at the bottom of our little setup. So I'm going to go in here. And then the rapid item valve I'm going to put there, you know, sort of jumping on top of it so that it's facing upwards, all right? Good. The block gate I want to be on the piece above my um, my block of water because my block of water is going to be sitting on top of this thing here. So with all of this sort of stuff, you know, as per usual, it seems to be a bit of a standard. When you put it down, the side facing you is the one that does the work. All right. So let's just. You can move it with a wrench. Anyway, pick this stuff up with a pickaxe. It's all good. So I'm just standing really close to this and then aiming for this edge so that it ends up facing the direction that I want. Good. Next thing we need are our crystal growth accelerators. Now they need to be facing the way that I want. So I'm just going to add a couple of bits of cable here. They're just there as placeholders so that I can get this in the right spot. And look up. Look up. Look up. Alright, no worries. So they're all vertical, okay? Fairly simple and straightforward. Now what I want to do is I'm going to build this out a little bit. make a little box like that using cables. And the reason for that is because I'm about to place the water in here and when I place the water I don't want it to uh, to run out all over my floor and make a friggin mess and stuff like that. See this will stop the water from the little piece of cable will stop the water from flowing down these are going to stop it from flowing out. All right. So let's just put that in. There we go. And it flows out one block, which we've left, left empty, for the remaining crystal growth accelerator. Now we're just going to come up here. There we go. And we're done. So we've got our growth accelerators in the right spot. Collect all the cable. So that they're not in the way. Okay, good. So that's our little thing that's going to, you know, help me automate. Um, the item valve is facing the right way. The block gate's facing the right way. Now we need to use our cable to hook things up. And we're going to need our inventory manager and we're going to need a chest because the, um, as far as I know, the the ME system can't directly output to a, a factory manager block. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the ME system to output to a chest and then Steve's factory manager is going to pick things up out of the chest, do its processing, drop things back in the chest where they're going to be imported again. Sounds a little confusing, but it's cool. Um, just trust me on this, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment. So now we need to connect this rapid item valve to that block gate using inventory cable. 
And we're just going to run straight down the side here. And one there. Is that the way we want to do it? Let's actually take these two off. And put them on the other side. Um, um, because I want somewhere that's convenient for... I've got to find somewhere... to put the chest so that it's convenient for the ME cable. Um, the cable also has to touch all of the growth accelerators. I tell you what, I'm going to put the chest here. Alright, let's go back to laying out cable. Alright, so that's touching, that's good. That's bad. Because the chest has to be touching the cable as well. Okay. Oh, no, I've fucked that up. There. Because where I had it, I had a piece of cable on top of this accelerator and on the bottom. So there was nowhere for me to connect power to it. Which means that this is in the wrong fucking spot now. We'll put it there. Alright, I know that just got really confusing. And the last thing we need is the factory manager itself. So, what we've got is we've got our item valve, which is touching the inventory manager, which is then connecting to this piece of cable, which goes up to the block gate. Right. And the chest is in a spot where it's right next to a cable um, and it's touching the inventory cable as well. So I'll just have a bit of a closer look around that. You can see we've got the factory manager here, inventory cable, rapid item valve, cable, 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 and a block gate on the top. So now we can connect that and we'll put an extra piece of cable next to here. Connect that one, connect that one and then this last one in order to connect this up is actually going to have to come down the bottom. All right. So there we go. That is all of the accelerators active. You can sort of see what I've done. And to make it a little bit cleaner, you see I've got two pieces of cable here, but if I put one there, I can get rid of two. All right. So, I recommend doing this in, in creative first, so that you can muck around a bit. It'll take a little bit of mucking around to get it right.
but yeah, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the block gate and the item valve to be touching either cable or the inventory manager. Um, the flux cable has to see the chest on two sides, one for the interface and one for the import bus and all of the growth accelerators have to be active all right you got that one I know that was really confusing but uh, look I'm sorry about that man that's all I can do is apologize for being such a shit teacher now I'm just sort of using some stone to go around and fill in all of the blank spaces all right so that everything is you know as nicely filled in as possible good Alright, we'll get back to that in a moment. And now I have an import bus and an interface. The import bus I'm going to put on this side, and the interface I'm going to put on the top. So that they're both connected up, you know, to this one piece of cable. It's online, it's all good. Alright, let's continue filling in my, uh, my unused space. But I'm not going to to cover the um, the import bus or the interface yet because I still have work to do with them. Do 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 do. All right, we're almost done. Now we need to program the inventory manager, all right? And we also need to make something to go in the import bus because at the moment um, I can tell it to import one thing, all right? But I need to import four things. I need to tell this thing to import the the three different kinds of pure crystals. Uh, pure, yep, there we go. We've got Surtas, Pure Flux, and Pure Nether Quartz. And I also need to tell it to import uh, Flux, this one. Because we need to make these as well by dropping the right items into a... Um, a thing of water which we've conveniently got right in the middle of here so first one up all right we're going to get all right oh that's right sorry in order to import the four things I need to increase the capacity of the import bus so what we're looking for card and there is a capacity card, right, which is just a basic card and a piece of Certix crystal. So let's just quickly go and make that. Let's just quickly make a pattern for that. Good. Put it in our system, because I like having patterns for pretty much everything. And we need one of these. So watch what happens when we put this in here. See how this one looks a little different to these ones? These are sort of disabled. All right, when I put this in here, it opens up four more slots, which is just what we need. <coughs> oh. 
Good. Now let's grab a piece of nether quartz. And we're going to say that nether quartz, when you put it into a macerator, makes nether quartz dust. <clears throat> so we'll go and put that over here. Good. That's the macerator. Yep, good. We're in the right spot. Let's grab some sand. Now, crafting recipe. Um, we need one of those. Hurry up. Piece of nether quartz and sand makes two Surtis Quartz Seeds and that just goes into a molecular assembler this one makes Nether Quartz Seeds and that goes into an assembler And finally, flux dust plus sand makes two flux seeds. Good, good. You bastard. You can go there. We're going to have to expand this sometime soon. We've got plenty of room. Oh, that's right. I also went through here and for all of the molecular assemblers, I added five accelerator cards. Nothing on these on the interfaces because these are the things that actually do assembly work so adding accelerator cards makes them go faster okay so let's drop the sand in next start next start next start all right. <clears throat> so we've got all those bits and pieces, right? So the first thing we want to do Oh, you know what's happening? The import bus isn't set to anything. So it's just importing everything. So I'm just going to grab one of my pure Surtis Quartz and I'll put it in here. So that it's saying I only want to import Surtis Quartz crystals. Let's get our seeds back <coughs> and drop them in the chest. Good. Now if I put this in so that goes. Now, this is Steve's factory manager. What it is, is a way to manage, a really good way to manage liquids and items and things like that in inventories or, you know, sometimes you get to, to do some funky things like, um, hang on a second, sorry about that, my chair was a bit out of place, um, like, you know what we're doing now which is dropping items into a spot or picking items up or things like that so this is the way it works all right <clears throat> um, there is inputs and outputs for items and other bits and pieces uh, just for the moment I just want you to sort of go with me um, and I will show you how how this thing works, um, how to put together a, um, a program to do bits and pieces. Um, program in this, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is just add, add a few boxes and hook up the lines and configure the boxes and it's all taken care of for you, all right? Now, at the moment, we've got Surtis, Flux, Nether Quartz, and we want to drop those things into the water through our block gate. Alright, 
So our input, we've got an input and we've got an output. Our input, you see if you click this it expands it. Now you can give it a meaningful name. I always recommend doing that. This is the input is the wood chest. Press the save button. And the output is going to be the block gate. S save that. Good. Now in the wood chest, we say, you know, first thing we've got to do is we've got to pick which inventory we're working with. We've got a couple of bits and pieces, but for the moment we are working with the wooden chest. All right. Um, you can tell it what side you want to pull stuff from. For a chest it doesn't matter, for some of our other machines, which you'll find out a bit later on, it does matter. For the moment though, any side will do. Um, and if you click on one that's active, you see how it's got the white circle around it, it's active, you can deactivate it. Click something else, you can active, deactivate, active, yeah, whatever, it's fine. Whatever floats your boat, you can set it up whatever way you want. Now the items, all right, you've got a whitelist and a blacklist. Whitelist means only deal with items that appear on this list, and you can have a heap of the fuckers. A blacklist means any item apart from the items that appear on this list, all right? So what we want is we want to say we want a whitelist, and then we click this first question mark and it comes up with this little box. And we type in seed. There's 272 seeds. All right, let's try this. Um, Serta's, here we go. Serta's quartz speed, seed. Click on that and it says, yep, yeah, no worries. Now we've got a nether quartz seed that yep there we go make sure you get this one because as you can see as it develops it gets bigger and bigger and stuff like that you've got to make sure you get the right item which is this tiny little one here and we've got a flux seed good so for the moment right this Input is only going to take items from the chest, from our wooden chest, that appear on this list. Okay? Good. And at the block gate, our target, you see, we now this is one place where the side is important because if you remember, our block gate is at the top. We want to drop them downwards, alright? So for our block gate, we need to say block gate, yep, good. The target needs to be set to down. All right, and I always like to put in the items that we're dealing with. Even though it shouldn't make a difference, I've found sometimes it does, it's just um, I like to be thorough and a bit of a perfectionist. Good. Okay. Now you see these little knobs on the top and the bottom? They determine the, you know, how this little program runs. So if we get like 20 of these little boxes hanging around here, what you do is you click on the output of one you see the line that's coming across? You can tell it to go pretty much anywhere. You might even be able to tell it to go to the input of its own box. I don't know. Don't do that. You might break your world. Um, so we've clicked on that. We've got our little line and we want it to go to here. All right, so that we're inputting items at the wood chest and outputting them to the block gate. All right. And the block gate is going to drop them into the water. Okay, now to actually make this run, we need a trigger, and a trigger is something that just makes the program go. 
This is this is like the start button. There's a few different options for triggers. For the time being, I don't want you to muck around with this. We'll have a look at a few different triggers later on when we're doing a, a factory manager special. But for the moment, I just want you to connect up a trigger to hit the top here. So you've got trigger, wood chest, block gate. Now if we look in our chest, those seeds are gone. All right which means that they've been taken out of the chest by the factory manager and dropped in the water. Now incidentally, make sure you've got your coin of fortune turned off because it will just pick up everything in here and that's going to fuck with us really badly. Alright, next thing to do is we have another input to make. Alright, and this is an, an output so this is our, like our, our stuff that needs to be processed and now we need to collect the things that are finished processing. So this we're going to call item valve because remember the item valve is the thing that picks up stuff that we want and we want this to be the rapid item valve good we want to collect from up because remember the block of water is above our item valve and we want to collect only these things pure Surtis Quartz, pure Flux Crystals and pure Nether Quartz All right? and we want to output them to the wood chest Good. Sorry. Target, it's a wooden chest, it can be anything. Items, whitelist. Pure. That one, that one, and that one. So you can see how we've set it up, right? We're taking our, our seeds from the chest and dropping them from the block gate so that they go into the water. And then when they've turned into the pure crystals, we want to pick them up from the item valve and put them back in the wooden chest. Alright. So this output goes to this input. Like I said, you know, you just click the output, drag the line to the input of the, the next thing in the list, and then this output let's have a look at our chest we we've got the pure flux crystal and we've got the pure nether quartz crystal we don't have the pure certus quartz crystal because our import bus already knows to remove that from the chest and import that back into the ME system so let's just take one of each of these and we're going to just click in one of the empty boxes now if we look in the chest, they're gone. Let's go back over here and look in here for pure. And we had a few of these, we had a few of these, but now we've got two pure nether quartz crystals. All right. So that does our pure crystals. The only thing that we're not doing yet is our basic flux crystals. these things all right and these things are made by putting a charged certus quartz a nether quartz and a redstone dust into a puddle all right so what we need to do is we need to get we're not outputting anything yet we need a charged certus quartz we need a nether quartz and we need a redstone alright we'll drop these into here and we want to tell our our inventory manager that it also needs to pick up these three things alright so we go back to here this is our inputs remember and we tell it that we also want to pick up 
charge Certus Quartz, Nether Quartz, and Redstone. Good. And the output for the block gate, because I keep things, you know, pretty clean, charge Certus Quartz, Nether Quartz, and redstone. Good. That's already saved. They've already gone. So in there it's actually making our flux crystals. So now we need to go back here and we need to say to the item valve pick up flux crystals. and output to the wooden chest. We look in here, and there they are. Now we tell our import bus that you can pick up these as well. And there they go, into the system. Alright, so we're finished with the import bus. We can close off that piece of the piece of the wall. And the last thing we need to do, now that we've, you know, sort of, we've done our factory manager work, we've set up, we've set up our little thing inside the wall so that it does what we want it to do. The last thing we need to do is to set up the interface, all right? So what we do is we go over here and we say we want a Certus Quartz seed. Give it a minute. Now it's a processing pattern, not a crafting pattern, and we say that one Certus Quartz seed will give you a pure Certus Crystal if you put it in here. Alright? And we do the same for the other two. Next, start. So a nether quartz seed will give you a nether quartz crystal if you put it in here. And finally, a flux seed will give you a pure flux crystal in here. Now we've got one more pattern to produce, which is the one for flux crystals themselves. Now a flux crystal requires a charged Certus Quartz, a Nether Quartz, and a Redstone, and that will produce Two. You see, if I, if I, you know, sort of grab a hold of this, right, and I right-click once, it'll have one item. If I right-click again, it'll have two. If I left-click, it'll say it's going to do whatever I've got in my inventory, in my hand. So just double-check, make sure your numbers are right. Good. And that goes in here as well. So let's uh, let's test that one out. Grab all those, and it says no, I know how to craft this thing. So I'm going to say, give me ten. Now we've got five redstone, five of those, five of those. Start. Give it a moment. Uh, do you know why this is so slow? Because there's no accelerator cards on the import bus. But anyway, you saw it gave me 10, alright?
Yes, I can reach it. I've got a space for three. Let's have three. Good. Now just look up under here. You might need to dig out a bit of your wall. Alright. So we've automated that. And the last thing we need to automate is the production of the flux dust with a flux crystal. And this one goes in the macerator. There we go. There's our macerator. Yep. Good. All done. Drop those back in here. Get rid of our leftover inventory cable. We don't need this box anymore. Alright, good. How much storage are we using? We're not even using a full disk. We will, trust me on this, we'll use a lot of storage. But um, that's, I'm going to call that an, an end of an episode because, you know, I showed you a few things that I'd done off camera. Um, and I just wanted this episode to focus on automating this horrible thing in the middle here. Because it takes a little bit of work. Um, okay, I think I'm, well, I don't think, I know I'm going to call it an episode there. Uh, thanks for watching, dude. Have fun. And wave and stake at you. Yeah, wave torch at you. Awesome. I think I like to put, I prefer waving, waving torches around. That's just funky. Alrighty. Have fun, man. Oh, by the way, have a look at, you know, you have a look at, say, this piece of cable, right? And you see how it's got a couple of blue lines? And this one has got two white lines and a blue line. Basically what it is, it's a little code to tell you how many channels are being used. Alright? Yeah. That's pretty funky. Blue is four. I think um, white is eight. So we've got two whites and... Or, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Let's go and have a look at this one. Yeah, so we've got, we've got bugger all happening there. Um, yeah, so it's got a bit of a code on the cables to show you how many channels are being used. See, look at this. I mean, this has got four blues, um, some of which are taken up by this, and then this has got two blues, and then, yeah, I really don't care about that. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Anyway... That is today's episode. We have automated our um, our crystal production. Um, what am I going to do next? Let's see now. What I'm going to do off camera, okay? Ah, fuck it. Let's let's finish this episode off. Uh, let me see now. So I've got um, these four crafting storage things. All right. Now these allow you to do crafting. But what you can do is you can add a thing called a co-processing unit. So this little thing, like if it's got a crafting job to do, um, it can do a fairly complicated recipe, but it can only do one thing at a time. If I add a co-processor, it can do more than one thing at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three co-processors to each of these crafting storage. So I've got Four, four, so I need twelve. Alright, let's let's uh, let's have a look at what's, in, what's required here. Um, yep, I've got the crafting unit. Next, start. Da, 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 da. Waiting, there we go. Good, that's our pattern. Put our pattern in here. Crafting co-processors, so I want 12. Next, start. Alright, I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so like I said, um, I have to break up my videos in a very strange place. Uh, so this is where I'm going to cut this one off and we'll continue where we left off on the next one. I know it means that the tasks aren't being 
divided up evenly video by video, but there's just a fair amount of footage to get through for us to do our ME system. Um, and it's either I make, you know, like a four or five hour video, or I do it like this. Alrighty, thanks man. I'll catch you next time.